Policy Forum, partnering with Elizabeth Glazer um, Pediatric AIDS Foundation today, because only healthcare actors, only people who deal with health, are not going to be able to reach the agenda if they do not have support from the civil society. So it is very important that all actors in the country work together so that we can reach a common goal, which is sustainable development. And one of the issues about sustainable development is that health is involved. So this is why Policy Forum today has an honor, or rather, Elizabeth Place of the Pediatric Foundation have found it an honor to utilize the platform by Policy Forum. Now, I'd like to welcome um, Dr. Leo Haule from ECPAF, Elizabeth Glazer Pediatric AIDS Foundation, to the front. Good morning. Okay, so my name is Dr. Leo Haule. I'm working with uh, Elizabeth Glazer Pediatrics Foundation as a country implementation manager for a small project called CAPTB, Catalyzing Pediatric TB Innovations. This is just an uh, outline of my um, presentation. I will be talking some, something about the introduction uh, with, of uh, Elizabeth Glazer in Tanzania, but as globally. Also, I'll be talking about our CAP TB project and why we are discussing about pediatric TB today. I'll be talking about ba the basics of TB as a disease, but also why are we advocating for pediatric TB. And also, we'll be uh, looking at some of the overview of our TB and Lipos national strategic plans from 2010 up to uh, 2025. Uh, but also, we'll see some of the achievements in those national strategic plans, especially number five, which is the current one which just uh, completed last year. And then we'll see about uh, gaps which we need to be discussed because we have our panelists and also we have uh, several stakeholders who can have time to discuss those, uh, those areas. And later on, we'll see what are the key con uh, content for Shadow UTB in National Strategic Plan number six. And we can also uh, discuss some of the issues. And then the discussion will be our, 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 our last, uh, our last uh, session. In short, Elizabeth Gates Abedix Foundation, which actually started in 1988 in the United States of America. And uh, how it uh, started, uh, actually in 1981, uh, while uh, giving birth to her daughter, Elizabeth Glazer had issues with uh, blood transfusion, and then he got HIV infection through uh, blood transfusion. And later on, during uh, breastfeeding, he passed the HIV infection to his daughter, Ariel. So later on, in 1984, he got another baby, uh, uh, Jack Glazer. Unfortunately, also Jack Glazer got HIV infection in utero, that is, before delivery. 1988, the first child, that is Ariel, passed away due to HIV. And then Elizabeth Glazer made a promise to fight HIV, especially to uh, ensure that no child is dying or no child is getting uh, a negative impact of HIV infection. So together with our friends, uh, as you can see the first picture, there are two friend, uh, three friends there. So the first one uh, the, in the middle is Elizabeth Glazer. And the other one is Susie Zigan, and the other one is Susan De Laurentiis. So together made up a foundation called the Pediatric AIDS Foundation. But later on, uh, pediatric, uh, uh, Elizabeth Glazer passed away due to HIV. And then there's, uh, the two friends uh, made a promise to, to, retail, to sustain uh, his, his, his dreams. So they changed the name from Pediatric Foundation into pediatric, uh, Elizabeth Glazer Pediatric Foundation, which actually exists up to now. So in the middle picture is Jack Glazer who is about 36 years now and is alive, healthy, and is a EGPAF ambassador. He's actually visiting us uh, several times. He, uh, pediatric TB, which we are going to discuss today, is part of the ambition of which the founder, Elizabeth Grazer, has laid down to see that no child is dying, uh, either from HIV or from something related to HIV. So from that, um, the main promise from HIV, pediatric HIV, also, it have grown up to other, other sections, so including the pediatric TB of which we are deciding today, because the main focus is about pediatrics or about children. EGPAF started in uh, 2003. Actually, it's the main core uh, program, uh, the PMTST, Prevention of Mother to Child Transmission of HIV. So, our project called Call to Action. And actually, it started as a, what we call PEFA Track 1, 
organization. Because when PEFA started uh, the mission in Tanzania, or in, in Sub-Saharan Africa, there are some few organizations who had received support directly from PEFA. So Ed Power was among the first PEFA Trekwan organization. So it started in business in Tanzania in 2003 with a project called Call to Action. Main focus was prevention of mother to child transmission of HIV, which is also the promise as the grades are made. We added some components like care and treatment, apart from PMTCT, we had care and treatment. Then we have TB programs, as today we'll be discussing about TB. We also have uh, maternal newborn and child health services, and later on family planning, and also we had what we call early childhood development in Swahili called Uchangamshi. So all these were added later on. And we had several uh, projects, and main donors were PEFA, USAID, CDC, uh, CIF, UNITAID, and Conrad Hilton Foundation. Actually, the Conrad Hilton Foundation are supporting us through AI childhood development, and UNITAID are supporting us through what they call pediatric TB, the things we are discussing today. Currently, we are supporting uh, six regions. I think the map is here and there you can see. And actually, the regions are displayed between the central and, and northern region. We call central and northern zone. That is Arusha, Kilimanjaro, Tabora, Singida, and Dodoma. So these are, uh, and actually Manyara, the regions we are supporting uh, 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 up to now. So because we are discussing about pediatric TB, and actually, we'll be focusing uh, this discussion to a small project called uh, CAPTB, which is actually focusing on the pediatric TB per se. And this uh, project uh, is a four-year project, 2017 to 2021, and it's funded through UNITAID. And actually, it is uh, supporting two regions, uh, Sangida and Tabora. We are supporting about uh, 45 facilities. When I say facilities, I mean healthcare facilities. And our main focus is to ensure that we innovatively uh, collaborate with the government uh, to ensure that uh, we support all initiatives to increase pediatric TB notification, to ensure that all uh, uh, ped uh, children with TB uh, are provided with treatment, and to ensure that they also are uh, cured from, uh, from, from those treatments. So that is the goal, to contribute to reduction in morbidity and mortality. And how can we do that? Also by critically uh, addressing the uh, service barriers. So if maybe because of uh, capacity of service providers, we provide training. If because maybe uh, shortage of maybe supplies, we, 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 we work with the government to ensure that we uh, build up the gap of maybe supplies and so forth. But actually the project has uh, about uh, five uh, result areas. Output number one is to uh, enabling environment, I mean policies and guidelines. So even today when we're discussing about uh, with sports forum, it means it is a good uh, opportunity for us to share what is actually being done and what we've been uh, supporting in terms of policy. But after policy, we also ensure that to increase demand. We want uh, many uh, uh, guidance, many children are accessing the service, so they, 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 they seek for service. And number three, after seeking the service, they are provided with all service to so ensure that the service is available. And number four is to generate data or uh, novel evidence from the service we are providing uh, so that people can see if this is intervention, uh, this intervention are working or not, so that the government can take the intervention from these two regions I mentioned to other part of Tanzania. But also, out of number five, to ensure that whatever we do, and which is actually uh, giving results, is also sustainable. Because one day, uh, people will here, maybe the next day will not be here, but we want the government, the local government, central government, uh, to, uh, to sustain the in initiative we are, we, are, we are actually working on. And uh, CAPTB is actually a global project. We are working in several countries, including nine in Sub-Saharan Africa, as well as Tanzania. So this is in general about ECBAP, about uh, CAPTB. So TB, as TB is a chronic infectious disease. It is a chronic, not acute. So it's a chronic infectious disease, and actually caused by a bacillary bacteria called Mycobacterium tuberculosis. So we call it TB just in the shorter term. And typically, it affects the lungs. We call it pulmonary TB. But sometimes it can affect other parts of the body instead of the lungs. So there is TB of the bones, the TB of the, we call it TB adenitis, TB of the abdomen. But typically, uh, TB affects the lungs, and we call it pulmonary TB. And actually, it can affect other parts of the body. But uh, TB is mainly airborne, so it is transmitted through airways. And actually for children, because today we are talking about children, usually children get infection from their parents or their guardians or the older children or maybe the adolescents. So these are the, uh, the point where children can uh, contact uh, TB. And once a child is uh, exposed to TB, he may either end up TB infected or may, he may end up with TB disease. TB infection is a situation where a child is exposed to be and a good uh, uh, my, uh, go to bacteria, but without active 
TB symptoms. So somebody can have a, a TB uh, bacteria in the body, but not show active TB symptoms. But a TB disease is somebody who has infection, but also show active TB symptoms. So maybe if we are handled here, and maybe we go and, and do some screening, you may find that there's a signal number of us. We have TB bacteria, but we don't have these active TB symptoms. So this is the difference between infection and, 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 and the disease. Why are we advocating about pediatric TB? So pediatric TB has got several challenges, as well as there are opportunities to address those challenges. Now, among those challenges, TB infection in children it's most likely to progress into TB, active TB. So as I said, infection is just to have an infective agent. But active diseases, you show signs and symptoms. So if you take a child and an adult, and both are exposed to a, a TB infection, most likely a child will develop into active TB, and the adult can survive with infection without any active TB for a longer time. So that is why we are taking children as a, as a priority. If you compare adults and children, once they get active TB, it's more likely a child will pass away compared to adults. So there is high case fatality rate for children compared to, to adults. Also, more likely to get extra pulmonary TB. As I said, there is pulmonary TB and extra pulmonary TB. So most, it, there are, uh, we can say a large a number of our children may develop extra pulmonary TB after being uh, infected with TB. Another challenge is about diagnosis uh, 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 challenges. So. Because it's an extra pulmonary TB, so sometimes it's not easy to diagnose through our existing uh, diagnostic uh, uh, technologies or, or approaches. Also, most children, especially those under five, do not produce sputum. So it's not easy to collect sputum as you do for adults. You collect sputum, we send to the lab and we test. But for children, especially for under five, you cannot collect sputum easily. Sometimes you, know, you need advanced sample collection techniques like gastric suppression or sputum induction, which is sometimes not easy, especially for lower level facilities. Another challenge is about low bacillary, or technically we call power bacillary. So sometimes you collect a sample from a child, but the number of bacteria in that sample is too small to be detected through our, our diagnostic uh, system. So that is also another, another challenge. Often they rely on clinical diagnosis and X-ray, as I said, because uh, they may not produce sputum, or they produce sputum which cannot actually be detected through maybe a microscope or through gene experts. So sometimes we rely on clinical diagnosis like X-ray, history, and uh, we call it score chart. Another challenge in pediatric TB is about presentation itself. There's no like a specific presentation for TB in children. So we call actual presentation is vague, and actually they may present with fever, but fever can be malaria, fever can be as a, as a problem. They present with weight loss, this can be malnutrition, and as a condition. They can present the failure to thrive. They have a longer time, they do not gain weight, but this can be another underlying condition. So they are not representing the typical feature of TB. So that's why it's another challenge. But TB risks. Most of uh, children who are infected with TB, they got infected from the household. They are exposed to the household. So there's no way, because if a father has TB, or a mother has TB, is a guardian has TB, there's no way that a child can stay away, especially for those under five. So that's why we say, Mostly, they are infected from their primary caregivers, so where the people take care of them. But the opportunity we have is that once the child has been diagnosed timely, they go to treatment timely, most of them, they have high treatment success rate. So this is an opportunity to have. So the main opportunity we have, first of all, to ensure that we identify those uh, children with CTB, we provide them with treatment, and most of them, they uh, are successfully improve from, from TB infection. Today, we are going to see about the national TB and reproducy strategic plan. We call it TB and reproducy because they are within the same program. We have national TB and reproducy program. So within them, they have this so-called national uh, TB and reproducy strategic plan. And we we'll just review the strategic plan between 2020 and up to 2025. We know that we have strategic plans addressing pediatric TB. We know that we have guidelines addressing strateg uh, pediatric TB. So today we are going to see that if we have all these things in place, we have policies, we have guidelines, we have strategic plan. What have we achieved from those all we have? So that is actually the key discussion of today. So we have all this. Is, we are not discussing about the new policies. We are not discussing with something not existing. We are discussing about everything which we have, and we are going to see how we are using what we have to achieve our pediatric uh, our targets. So between 2020, 2010 up to 2025, 
we have about three national strategic plans for TB. So the first national strategic plan for TB and leprosy, 2020-2015, there's no specific section for childhood TB. For example, if they are talking about TB notification, so they included TB notification for children together with adults. If they are talking about TB diagnosis, they included TB diagnosis uh, of children together with adults. So there was no like a, a specific pediatric TB section in national strategic plan number four, which ended in 2015. During that time also, TB not, uh, notification, when I say TB notification, on how TB was screened and actually diagnosed to be to have TB, uh, TB notification was somewhat low, between 7%, uh, and actually it increased up to 10.6% uh, along the end of uh, 2015 when the new technologies come in, the gene expert and so forth. But according to the, to the, to the research and actually recommendation from WHO, Actually, the estimation uh, uh, proportion of children with TB in a community is actually 15 to 20 percent. So having 80 percent to 10 percent is actually was lower than the, the estimated uh, percent of uh, pediatric TB notification. The National TB uh, Repos Strategic Plan number five, which is 2015 to 2020, after seeing the importance of pediatric TB, the, the, there was addition of pediatric TB specific section. And actually, the target to increase notification of, of pediatric TB from 10.6, which was in 2015, up to 15% in 2020. And actually, it was recommending decentralization of services. That's why we were also discussing this decentralization. If you say decentralization, as far as what we discussed today, there are like two issues. Number one, decentralization of services from higher healthcare facility level to lower levels facility. For example, from regional hospital to district hospital, from district hospital to, uh, to health center, from health center to, dis to dispenser level. This is another way you can see about decentralization. For example, if you are just supporting TB in, in, in TB clinic, you are now taking TB screening into RSH, you are taking TB clinic into OPD, you are taking TB screening into, into HIV clinic, you are taking TB screening into, into, into other sections. So this is also decentralization we're talking about. So in order to reach that 15%, it was also advised that there should be decentralization of service, especially expanding TB screening into nine TB entry points, RSH, OPD, and other section. And also, there was an introduction of new technologies of diagnosis, like Gene Expert, which also started uh, during the same time. National strategic plan number six, which is start, started 2020 up to 2015, it also added another component. Apart from maintaining the 15%, they added a component of increasing proportion of uh, under five, because it seems that we have done somehow better for those between five and 15, but be below five, there is a challenge. That's why they, to increase a proportion uh, to zero to four, to five to 15, between uh, to 1.5 uh, to one ratio. What was achievement uh, as far as uh, strategic plan number five is concerned? The studies show that proportion of predict to be among the, among the whole to be notification is 15 to 20%. Tanzania made 15% as a target for pediatric TB notification. And with national strategy number five, we managed to reach this target. So between 2015 up to 2020, as a nation, we managed to reach 15 target of pediatric TB notification. And this is actually done through several uh, stakeholders in support, uh, in, in collaboration with, uh, with, 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 with the government, I mean NTLP, and actually through several approaches. So this is an example from Cap TB project. Actually, we have like a two regions and combination of the two regions. We have the blue bar for baseline, we have uh, the, the following bar, like the orange bar, the year one of the project, and the last bar is the year two of the project. So the year two is the project is up to September uh, last year, and the year three is up to September uh, 2019, and the baseline went, was in, on, on, on early, uh, early 2018. So we find that about decentralizing pediatric TB screening, we managed to increase TB notification almost in double. For example, in Singida, for those facilities project, we managed to increase notification from 369 to 540. While in Tabora, we managed to increase notification from 178 to 379. So if you check in general, we managed to increase from 547 to 909. This is almost double the number in three years. Taking pediatric TB screening to other section rather than TB's units in OPD in RSH has managed uh, to increase pediatric TB notification. And actually, a large number of these children would be missing this opportunity to be notified with TB, and at the end of the day, they would get infected, and at the end of the day, maybe they lose their life. So why, that's why the strategic plan number five recommended for decentralization of these TB services. So this is a percent of TB notification 
for children, proportion of children among those with TB nationwide by 2020 September. But also, there are about seven regions, about 25%, which are even below than the 10% which was in 2015. So it's more worse than 2015. So it's another, it's another challenge. So as a nation, we reach the 15%, but still there are areas where children are missing opportunity. And missing opportunity for children is, is a challenge because they are not diagnosed on time. They are also not treated on time. And as a result, they may get up uh, losing their life. And actually, for EGPAF, we are not uh, happy when we see a child losing life because of TB and HIV. The government also added a special section for pediatric TB. That is our objective number, 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 number three, of which the target is to maintain the 15% which we achieved in 2020, but also to increase the ratio of 0 to 4 and 5 to 15 from 1.3 to one to 1.5 to one. So the main intervention which has been suggested in this strategic plan number six is to expand advanced sample collection to all hospitals, especially in sputum induction and gastric aspiration, because as I said, they do not produce sputum, to integrate TB service and child adolescent health services and facilities the communities. Also, they are talking about decentralization. So they also they promote decentralization. So we hope that we maintain the strategic plan number five achievement and we do more to get those under five and those regions who are not doing better. We want every child to be notified timely, to get treatment timely, and to improve. And actually, the justice quote from pediatric uh, uh, mother Elizabeth Glazer, that the people say they care, but actions are what saves life. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. People say they care, but actions are what save lives, yeah? All right, um, we have Dr. Saif and Dr. Munuo who are going to give us an overview of how TB, especially Dr. Saif, will tell us how it has been in Ilala Municipal Council and how childhood uh, TB has been, um, with example, the Ilala Municipal Council, how childhood TB has been um, prevailing inside there and what you guys have been doing to combat it. Karibu, Dr. Saif, uh, to speak to the flow. From Ilala Municipal, let me give you some experience about uh, TB in general and uh, pediatric TB. Of course, TB uh, cases are increasing now and then, but uh, for the year 2020, about the uh, second quarter, the number of cases were reduced. I think uh, everybody knows what is the reason, but for those uh, they don't know, because of COVID-19 uh, pandemic, most of our uh, people were uh, ready to come to our facilities because they fear that uh, when checked for TB, maybe they were diagnosed to have uh, COVID-19. So most of them were kept at home and I continue to use uh, uh, remedies for cough and uh, for COVID. But uh, also, this affects uh, pediatric TB notification. Uh, for the year 2019, as the Lala Manispo, we managed to reach 15% of pediatric TB notification. But uh, during the 2020, second year, we failed to, to do so. But uh, for third quarter of uh, August, the September 2020, we reached the 14%. But for the last quarter of 2020, which is uh, uh, October, December, we managed to, to maintain 15% because the cases were increasing from the COVID time where first quarter, second quarter the cases increased, but uh, unfortunately fourth quarter, the total cases were a bit reduced compared to third quarter. But for pediatric TB, we managed to reach 15%. But in general, for Dar es Salaam, 
because some of my nipples, they are below 15 and others above 15. So that's why during the presentation, you see that we are 11%. So, of course, we have the implementing partners who support pediatric TB in Ilala Manispo, which is uh, MDH. They support uh, gastric aspiration uh, sessions for, uh, for the area of training, uh, capacity building for the healthcare workers, but also supplies, other things, uh, sputum transportation, gene expert cartridge distributions, yeah, and, uh, and, and also their support, uh, the healthcare workers, we do the meeting to, to discuss about the issues of the pediatric TB. So the problem for pediatric TB diagnosis, uh, difficult to get uh, sputum, that is the one, but another one, when you get the sputum, even if you send for gene experts, the yield for positivity is low. So you are supposed as a clinician to take another a way of diagnosing these children by using chest x-ray, uh, just uh, sometimes clinical diagnosis you are supposed to use. But also, uh, sometimes use, uh, using pediatric TB score charts. So the challenge is you can get the sputum, but uh, the yield is, is uh, you can get the positivity is low. But sometimes you tell the mother not to feed the child maybe for six, eight hours, but uh, they fail to do so. When they come to facility, they say, I didn't get any, but uh, when you, you suck the sputum, sometimes you, you see there is a uh, food contents like milk. Most of the time, the it is negative. Decentralization of tuberculosis diagnostic services are very important so that we can reach a wider range of people in the country, especially children. Because you would have um, TB, but as I understood, maybe it will take you 100 years to notice, right? But it's very easy for a child to contract tuberculosis. What I got from this presentation, um, from the overview from um, Dr. Singh, is that partnership is important. You cannot act on uh, tuberculosis or any other thing without partnering with people because we need to have collective efforts to reach the ultimate goal. The goal is to leave no one behind. Now, if you're doing it by yourself in your house, you need to uh, at least raise awareness to somebody else who, has not, uh, who does not have information about tuberculosis. I'd like to welcome Dr. Godwin Nuo from AMREF. He is the deputy chief of um, party of the project Afya Shirikishi. Karibu. Diagnosing the TB in children needs a multi-sectoral multi collaboration. It needs a, a involvement of everybody in the community and in the society to ensure that uh, the children, uh, the, the people are aware that the, 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 most of the deaths of the children will be caused by tuberculosis. So creating awareness and making the community awareness uh, to help the, create the demand, the demand creation uh, to make sure that the children are being uh, taken to the proper channels so that they can be diagnosed. If you, if you have seen those regions which uh, had a good number of children who were reported with tuberculosis, is the regions which they were active working on facilities and in communities. And most of this regency, if you can see, there was an active uh, working in the community. And they were mostly on the global fund, if you can, you can see those regions, uh, where they are working on all the works up to the villages. Uh, the issue here is uh, involving many stakeholders who will go to the community and ensure 
that uh, people who are attending, children are being sick, they are being taken to the traditional healers several times, they are being going for Kidimi Kukata and the other issues like that. And the, most of them, they end up dying before even reaching the facility. But also, uh, we can remember that most of the fevers, low grade fevers in children, they might be uh, some part of the mycobacterium infection. So they need to go to the health facility. So uh, having the system in place to ensure that there is a, the awareness has been created, uh, there was a, a transportation of sputum, there is an active uh, awareness of the community, including the leadership, religious leaders, etc. It's a very important uh, to make to ensure that the children are being saved from this disease. Despite the difficulty in diagnosing the children, uh, most of the guidelines and the, there is a pediatric guidelines, there is a uh, diagnosis guidelines, and the operation manuals for the children. The only uh, missing link is the, uh, this information and the, this awareness between the community and the facility and between the parents and the society at, as a whole. So in a nutshell, I will say that uh, uh, collaboration in multi-sectoral, including government, stakeholders, community leaders, community platforms, they are very important traditional healers, accredited uh, drug dispensers, uh, all who are working in the community uh, are very important in ensuring that the children are being uh, well channeled for diagnosis and the later get treatment and survival. Thank you very much. The key is to make sure that no child dies from TB. Yeah? Because it's something that can be um, diagnosed and it's something that can be treated. You said that children under five years are highly at risk of getting tuberculosis if living with people or person having tuberculosis. So what do you advise various societies since there should be a way out to help them, to help them people that are in that kind of a society? How exactly can they solve the problem so as not to allow the persistence of trans transmission of tuberculosis to children under five years old? What are the things that can easily be noticed by people who aren't knowledgeable about tuberculosis? Partnership between whom and whom? Government and people? Do we really have people's voices? And how can they articulate them? And it is in here where comes one of the most important aspect, and that is education. Now, education, not only what you study in schools, but awareness in schools. And it is in here that is one of the major uh, shortages, uh, shortcomings within the country. Third thing that we have all discussed up in here is that there's a big difference between infection of the lungs, which you can get if you're working in a mine, compared to TB, which is a microbiological thing. The thing that also comes up in a very big way is how many of our lower level hospitals have got a facilities like x-rays and uh, testing. Let me give you a very good example. At the University of Dar es Salaam, we have a population of 2.5 million people within a radius of one, kilometer, one mile. 2.5 million people. At the University of Dar es Salaam Hospital, you cannot get your tests being done or an x-ray or dental care, etc. There's a primary school right next door up there. And this is the failure of our system we've got to discuss. Health is not just for the rich, it's for everybody. And while we are so grateful to USAID, one of the things that a new administration is going to take over is to see that health is for all people, not just for the rich. Thank you very much. Kama wao wana shiriki kwenye kutafuta, is it TB? 
kwa kutumia njia zipo. Nenda hospitalini peke yake, kuchukua hizi taarifa. Kama ni hospitalini peke yake, tunaona tuna viwanda na pia tuna wale watu ambao wanafanya wanajitegemea kufanya kazi wenyewe, wanachimba kokoto ama wale wanaogonga kokoto zile. Tunaona wanapelekea baadaye wanakuja wanapata malazi lakini wakiwa kwenye kazi kule kule hakuna kitu chochote ambacho wanachokipata nilikuwa naomba kama wao watumie zile taasisi nyingine ambazo zinajiri watu kama viwandani waingie nao mikataba ili kutambua afya zao kama vile wanavyofanya OSHA kwa ajili ya kujua mwisho wa siku mtu yupo kazini amepata shida hiyo je anasaidiwa vipi from the presentation we have seen uh, the direct uh, uh, vulnerable places where children can contact the TB now. How prioritized is this to the government strategies to give awareness to the community interventions? And that includes the education about this disease, as well as the infrastructures, uh, the transport that uh, children from government schools, especially that are using, they are loaded with a lot of children to, tra uh, to, go to, to transport them to school and about the care of uh, TB patients in, the, in our households, how, how can we educate to separate the uh, stigma to patients that um, if you don't come close to your father who is affected by TB? Thank you. I was looking at the presentation on the page seven where we're talking about um, targets that 15 of 28 regions are below targets and 7 out, 20, out of 28 regions are below baseline notification of 10.6% in 2015. Now my question is, uh, as far as I understand, uh, children under 5, I mean the newborns, they are they undergoing a national uh, immunization program for NTB is one of those nine uh, vaccines which are given to children. So if we have a uh, less number of notification does did not necessarily mean that the vaccination works probably they're vaccinated and therefore prevented and therefore we have less cases to report to to, to notify at, at the hospital tb vaccine labda tuelewe kwamba haim protect mtoto kupata tb lakini inachofanya inam protect asipate severe form of tb au tuberculosis kwa sababu hizi tb kuna Severe form, alafu kuna less severe forms. Severe form ni kama zile miliary TB, TB of the spine, TB, uh, TB of the cardiac. Yeah. Kwa hiyo, na mara nyingi utakuta watoto ambao tunagundua wana TB, utakuta ni, ya, ni TB hizi ambazo. Sio, 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 yani, yani, Sio severe form. Mwana. Kwa hiyo, ile BCG yenye ina mprotecti asipate severe forms. Ni marachache kukuta mtoto, amekuwa vaccinated, alafu wakapata labda miliari TB, au wakapata TB of the cardiac, na kama hivyo. Kwa hiyo, tufahamu kwamba mtoto anapopata BCG, sio kwamba ina mprotecti kwamba sugue TB. Kwa hiyo, tutegimee kwamba Lazima watoto watakuwepo wataka upata TB. Ilo ni la kwanza. Lakini la pili, hii vaccine ina potensi yake. Kifika miaka kumna mbili, inakuwa haina uwezo tena ya kuprotect. Association ya TB na HIV ni kweli kabisa kwa mba ipo na katika jamii yetu. Wengi wanakuwa wanaogopa kufika kwenye vitu vetu wa kutoa huduma kutokana na kwamba jamii inaelewa kwamba ukisha kuwa na TB kwamba tayari una HIV kitu ambacho sio kweli tumeona kwamba ni asilimia labda 20 ya 22 ya wagonjwa ambao wana TB huwa wana HIV wanapokuwa tested kwa hiyo kinachotakiwa ni uelewa ni jamii iweze kuelewa kwamba si kila mwenye TB kwamba ana HIV eh kwamba kuna wengine wana TB hawana HIV lakini kuna baadhi ambao watakuwa na yote mawili. Kwa hiyo jamii inabidi tuendelee kuielimisha kufika kwenye vituo vyetu pale ambapo wataona dalili hiyo association kama ambavyo nimesema ipo. Nikija kwenye eneo la diagnostic facilities 
ni kweli kabisa diagnostic facilities ni changamoto e, kwa mfano katika halmashauri yetu ya manispaa ya Ilala tuna gene expert machine nne ambazo mbili ziko katika maeneo ya magereza hizi ziliwekwa purposely kwa ajili ya ku screen wale inmates wanaoingia kwenye magereza iwapo watakuwa na maambukizi basi waweze kupata tiba e, na kwa kupata tiba watakuwa wamezuia yale maambukizi kutoka kwao kwenda kwa inmates wengine kabla ya kuchanganywa lakini wale ambao wa, watakuwa pia labda wana kusugu waweze kupata matibabu wasiweze kuambukiza wengine kabla ya kuingia kwenye magereza kwa hiyo kilichokuwa kinafanyika walikuwa kiingia wanatengwa hawachanganywe na wale wengine wanafanyiwa screening wanachukuliwa sputum for gene expert lakini pia baadhi ya facilities zilikuwa na x-ray machine kwa mfano Konga prison walikuwa na digital x-ray machine kwa walikuwa wanatumia methods zote in case hakupatikana kwa sputum anafanya na x-ray akipatikana na tb anaanza matibabu kabla ya kuwa kuchanganywa na wengine labda after two weeks tunategemea kwamba atakuwa ni less infectious au non infectious ndio anaweza kuchanganywa na wengine x-ray ni changamoto si vituo vingi venye x-ray lakini changamoto nyingine mtoto atakapofika au yule presumptive wa tb utakapompeleka pale kwa ajili ya kuchunguzwa kama ana tb sputum examination atafanya free of charge lakini ikifika kwenye swala la x-ray inabidi achangie kwa hiyo hii ni changamoto e, kuchangia kwa sababu vituo vinasema misamaha inakuwa ni mingi watoto wanakuwa exempted wazee wanakuwa exempted wenye magonjwa sugu wanakuwa exempted e, kwa hiyo unasema hospitali zitashindwa kujiendesha kwa hiyo lazima kwenye baadhi ya maeneo waweze kuchangia na hii ni changamoto Unaweza ukastrago kum, kumtafuta mwisiwa kwenye maeneo mbalimbali kwa kutumia community health care workers e, kwa kutumia traditional healers kwa kufanya kampeni mbalimbali unampa rufaa kwenda kwenye kituo kwa ajili ya kufanyiwa uchunguzi atatakiwa kulipa consultation kabla ya kufika kwenye hiyo diagnostic kwa hiyo ni changamoto wengine wanaanza kurudi hapo wanasema sina pesa ya ku kata cheti cha kumuona daktari. Na mara nyingi maabara zetu za TB zinakuwa ziko pale pale kwa TB clinic anapimwa makozi, majibu yanapatikana. Shida ni pale ambapo eh, X na sputum umesema negative na mgonjwa umeona na dalili, unampeleka kwenye X-ray sasa pale lazima X-ray sasa hivi vituo vingi viko kwenye system. Hawezi kwenda tu from nowhere anaenda kwenye X-ray kwenda kupiga lazima ataanzia reception kwa hiyo pale anakwama na kwa sababu tuna facility kama hamsini na nne hivi zinazotoa huduma za TB katika halmashauri yetu kwa hiyo itategemea kama ni wakati ambao kuna mazoezi maalumu ambayo tunafanya labda kuna active case findings tunafanya labda kwenye magulio au kwenye maeneo ya misongamano ya watu presumptive wanaweza kupatikana wengi more than 100 eh more than 100 per, per day lakini kwa hizi labda tunafanya contact investigation au contact screening kwa, ku, kwa kupitia wale bacteriological confirmed unaweza ukakuta labda 20 25 per day zinaweza zikawa zimefika kwenye vituo vyetu na kuhitaji kupata kupata diagnostic uh, facilities ambapo sasa inakuwa ni changamoto wengine wana afford kulipa kama hivyo hizo x-ray services lakini wengine wanashindwa wanasema ngoja nirudi nyumbani ili nikajipange sasa unaweza ukakuta tena kujipanga anaishia kwa e, wale watiba mbadala sasa na hapo ndio tunapopoteza wagonjwa kwa maana notification lakini pia na wengine huwa wanakufa kabla ya kuweza kuagundua kujenga uwezo wa jamii kuelewa haya magonjwa ni kitu muhimu sana. Sasa hivi serikali imekuja na na na, na, na guideline ambayo ina, inahusu community health workers. Hao community health workers wanatarajiwa kujua yale zile basics za yale magonjwa ambayo yanasumbua jamii. Na katika hiyo ina maana watawaelimisha watu ni jinsi gani ya ku ya, ku, ya kuangaika na haya magonjwa, ni jinsi gani ya kuweza kufika kwenye vituo vya afya lakini pia kuondoa stigma na na, na unyanyapaa ambao unayazunguka yale magonjwa. Eh tatizo liko kwamba kuwapata hao community health workers kila kitongoji ni rais
lakini jinsi ya ku sustain na kuwalipa incentives ni, ni kitu kigumu zaidi ambayo ina maana kwamba sasa hapo ndio partnerships zinazotakiwa kwamba kama kuna NGO au watu wengine ambao wanaweza wakawalipia kwa namna fulani kwa inkari kwa sababu huwezi kumtoa kwa mtu else workers anaenda kwenye kijiji fulani kilomita kadhaa alafu kwa nguvu zake alafu then akija inakuwaje kwa hiyo kuna vitu vingi ambavyo ni, ni multi sectoral ni vitu ambavyo ni partnership vinatakuwa vifanyike na wadau wote kwa ujumla tuna viongozi wa dini tuna watu mbalimbali mbali ambao ma, mashirika ambayo yanapaswa kwa mfano kama ni maeneo ya migodi tunategemea wale wenye migodi wawe wanatoa asilimia fulani kwa ajili ya kusaidia zile jamii zinazozunguka kwa sababu kule mgodini watu wanapata TB lakini wanakaa wapi wengi wanakaa kwenye community na kwa hiyo utakuta kwamba mashirika makubwa labda kama Coca-Cola whatever the, wanatakiwa wawepo kwenye hiyo hali nzima sasa hivi kuna uh, private sector vitu vya afya vingi ni, ni vya private by the time unaingia tu mlangoni eh, lazima ulipe kitu kwa hiyo uh, insurance kama watu wangeweza labda kupata insurance za namna mbalimbali whatever it is lakini wakawa wanaweza kupata insurance pengine inaweza kabima ya afya inaweza kusaidia kwenye haya mambo ya stigma pia nafikiri watu wa media wengi ya uh, tungeweza kuwa na watu wa media ambao watakuwa uh, wanaweza kuandika habari za TV kama hivi inaelimisha kwa, kwa lugha nzuri nyepesi ambayo kila mtu ataelewa eh, watu ukaenda kwenye magazeti ku social media hizi whatsapp with my groups na nini vitu kama hivyo ambavyo kwenye twitter na kadhalika ambayo ni, 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 ni njia pia ambayo sasa hivi jamii inatumia hatuwezi ku, kukimbia kutoka kwenye 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 media inatakiwa itangazwe ili watu waweze kwa sababu akishaingia kwenye simu yake ile ya kitoch anaweza akabonyeza nafikiri ni nyota 152 nyota 06 utapata habari zote za TV kama una dalili unafanya nini kwa hiyo vitu kama hivi unakuta vipo na vimeshatengenezwa na vinafanya kazi lakini je wale watu wanavi wanapata hiyo taarifa ili TV asiweze kupata TV pia watu walishe wanatakiwa wao pia wao na aware na kuhakikisha kwamba hao watoto wanapata chakula ambacho ni bora kwa kuelimisha jamii sio kwa maana ya kuprovide chakula lakini kuelimisha jamii kwamba watoto wale kitu gani na kwa wakati gani mara nyingi tuna discuss uh, issue za data uh, mambo ya afya sisi wenyewe kama wataalamu wa afya tunaona na wataalamu wa afya kutoka ngazi zote kutoka mashirika mbalimbali ngazi ya taifa na tunakuwa tukishare changamoto mafanikio na kuangalia tunaelekea wapi lakini inakuwa ni kitu kizuri tunapoona na wadau wengine na kama unatulivyosema TB na usisha pia sekta mbalimbali kwao nadhani kwa leo tumeweza kupata nafasi ya kushare vitu ambavyo unavifanya na wadau wengine wa upande wa mtazamo mwingine na imekuwa ni jambo zuri uh, naona tumeshiriki vizuri kwa hiyo tukipata nafasi nyingine pia nadhani itakuwa vizuri tuweza kushiriki asante sana lakini nasema tu shirika linaweza miradi mingi kwa kushirikiana na serikali ya Tanzania na wizara ya afya na la misemi na eneo la kufuka, la, la ukimwi ambalo tulijitambulisha katika mikoa mitano hapa Tanzania nalo limegawanyika katika maeneo mengi ambayo nafikiri yanahitaji pia kutenewa kwa hiyo kitokea nafasi katika kwenu au mkiona inafaa pia mtujulishe kupate nafasi ya kununua mambo mengi tunayofanya hapa Tanzania ambayo nafikiri jamii inahitaji kuyafahamu lakini pia tunaweza kushirikiana na wadau kama walioko hapa au watakao pata taarifa zetu ili kwenda mbele zaidi lakini tunashirikiana pia na mradi mkubwa wa USAID Boresha Afya ambao unafadhiliwa na USAID kupitia ukarimu wa watu wa Marekani. na wadau wengine wote ambao tunashirikiana katika jamii katika kutekeleza miradi tunayofanya hapa Tanzania kwa umuhimu serikali ya Tanzania ambayo ndio ina wajibu na majukumu ya kuhudumia Tanzania na amekuwa ni ndao mkubwa na mwezeshaji wa miradi ambayo tunashirikiana. Nasema asante kwa nafasi tena usichoke ukipata nafasi kipindi kijacho. Hakuna shida. Asante sana makofi kwa kitafadhali. Ya nguvu maana ametujuza kuhusiana na projects ambazo ziko na zinafanyika. Asante sana tena kwa shukuru. Uh, this is the first uh, breakfast debate of many for 2021. Kwa hiyo tunawakaribisha tena Ijumaa kama hii ya mwisho wa mwezi hapa hapa at um, Four Points by Sheraton na your host ni mimi hapa Iman Hatibu karibuni um, February. Asante sana.